Shalom Kharim, I'm Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live. Things going on. Something that was very disturbing right here. This, this Russian uh, video you're about to see. This happened in Odessa at the Eternal Flame. By the way, real quick so you can see what the Eternal Flame is here. This was a memorial that was built back uh, many years ago, but it was built for the loss of lives of the Russian soldiers that fight to liberate uh, the country from or, or, or fought during the attack of the German army uh, against the Russians that were there and so many of them died as a result. Now what was really strange though and, and this should be a viral video, 156 views is all it's had thus far, but the neo-Nazi fascist Ukrainian police here forcibly take this woman away when she, she's an elderly woman too, just trying to lay flowers in mem remembrance of these Russian soldiers from the Black Sea Fleet that died fighting Nazism. Well, no wonder she, uh, no wonder why this happened because again, you're dealing uh, with a government that is very much a fascist government now. And here, all these people are coming here, it's an anniversary they do this on, and they're coming to lay flowers at the Eternal Flame there for the Russian soldiers that died of the Black Sea Fleet. And here these police are dragging this old woman off, she's got her flowers in her hand, and everybody's trying to record this to make it public. This is what Petro Poroshenko's government is doing to ordinary citizens, just coming to lay flowers. I mean, are they that much hatred towards the Russian people? They don't even want a flower laid in remembrance for these people being delivered from Nazi Germany? It does let you know that clearly it is a Nazi regime that is running the country, and that is a shame. It is a shame that even that President Trump would allow a support. Mike Pence saying, uh, telling the uh, Petro Poroshenko that, that the U.S. has their back, that they are there uh, with their full support. They should not be supporting such a neo-Nazi fascist type of government. No wonder why so many Jews had to flee the country when this uh, overthrow of the government took place there. It was very sad indeed, but many Jews had to leave because they were dealing with Nazi fascism. And um, it, it's, just, it's just not a good situation. I remember Prime Minister Netanyahu encouraging the Jewish people to leave the country because of knowing this was a fascist uh, takeover of the nation. And as you can see, they forcibly took her away and the people knowing that this woman was being done wrong uh, do come to her aid. And I'm glad at least they're trying to come, but there's nothing they can do about it. They still took her away. Very shameful thing for the government of Poroshenko and what he is allowing to happen to people just because they're Russian uh, descent or you know, but this, it's a shame. It really is a shame. All over the world. Always seems to be a tense situation in the, in the world today. Never seems to be a dull moment at all. German army is starting to move equipment towards the Baltics. This is on Lorenzo's uh, channel, already happened. Lorenzo always bringing out some very incredible information on his channel here. Of course, that was on February the 21st. Uh, also, he is showing the U.S. coalition is killing more civilians than Russians are. In the latest uh, article out by The Telegraph, and, uh, and then we also have here, just to kind of share with you, um, this here is, uh, is the Russian S-400. Today, the Russian Air Forces there were able to shoot off uh, up to 12 of these missiles here in war games that they are practicing over there. And again, like our title of the article the other day, Russia is definitely not playing war games. Russia is being very serious about preparing and showing their strength to NATO uh, that uh, they are a force to be reckoned with. And uh, these S-400s are supersonic missiles. And according to Russian officials, these are missiles that are not able to be intercepted by uh, anything, any defense system that there is in the world today. Uh, of course, that still remains to be seen. They, they're definitely, as you can see from their launching, they're a very rapid uh, moving missile at moving at supersonic speeds according to uh, Russian information about these missiles. And they do move very, very rapidly, no doubt. Uh, another interesting thing here that Lorenzo brought out, and I wanted to share this with you guys as well. This is, um, uh, we see here from the pictures here that Lorenzo has shared on his page here, more military equipment arriving in Hungary this time here. We can see their train rail cars, we got tanks, armored, armored personnel carriers, 
uh, and other types of vehicles that, that have been brought in, uh, being assembled, getting them ready for uh, more of NATO forces in other parts of the region. Those of you that know that Hungary also borders Ukraine, uh, so it, it seems to be that there is a lot of expectation uh, that Ukraine could be the place that, that, that starts it all. Uh, moving into other news as well, looking at Russian news here, the RIA.ru says Bel uh, Belarus has, has spoke about hysteria around the exercises of Pod 2017 from Russia. There is actually some people spreading uh, the news that Russia is planning on taking over Belarus, that they're actually going to become an occupying force there. Whether or not that's being started by uh, Western media or not, I can't actually say. But anyway, there is, uh, again, another monstrosity of an exercise that will be uh, beginning here in the next month or so, uh, 2017 uh, Zapad, which means West uh, exercise there. And uh, it has a lot of people very nervous, especially in Europe, because last year there was 120,000 Russian troops that entered into Belarus for this exercise. At the same time, we know that NATO will be planning their own exercises there in and around uh, Belarus, so it'll be a very tense situation. And the bad thing is when you get things like this, anything could go wrong and could spiral out of control. Let's hope that that does not happen. Russia's also, according to their function on their uh, uh, military uh, channel there, uh, excuse me, Russian Defense Ministry's website is practicing today electronic warfare. Uh, the division of the BBO stationed in, in Buryatia began preparations for large-scale tactical exercise, and this is for electronic warfare. Uh, you can see the photo there on your screen and behind me there, they set that up. And then another very odd thing that Russia is doing, I, and I saw this the other day and didn't say anything about it, but I figured I'd mention it today. TV uh, uh, Zvizda.ru is uh, speaking about Russia's new World War games that are happening in Sochi. Sochi is there on the uh, Baltic, uh, excuse me, the Black Sea. And I just thought it was kind of interesting that Russia is actually doing world war games. I mean, there are 23, I believe 23 nations are participating in this military uh, style Olympic type games. This is, uh, of course, Sochi is where the Winter Olympics were held at one time uh, a few years back. And Russia now using this facility for military uh, winter type Olympic games. They, they are involved in skiing, they're involved in uh, ice skating, all types of things, but it's military troops that are involved in these activities here. And according to the article here, 23 nations are participating in this. There are 44 sets of military awards and seven sports uh, that can be gained during that. Don't really know what all that's about, but just the very fact they call it World War Games. It's almost as if Russia is not just not only playing war games, but they're getting very serious about uh, dealing with any confrontation that could uh, happen in the near future with NATO. So let's just pray that this does not Also, happen. the police are in, in Italy uh, are fixing to do a mass arrest for a migrant robbing rampage. 50 asylum seekers are to be arrested in Italy. Uh, according to the article here on uh, westmonster.com, says, while the politically correct establishment do their best to convince themselves that all who are coming to Europe are great people with sweet intentions, the evidence continues to, to paint a very different picture. According to it Italy Italian media, a group of 50 migrants were on a robbing rampage aboard a ferry from Cal, uh, Cal excuse me, Cal, Cagli Cagliera, excuse me, I don't, uh, to Naples overnight in what constitutes nothing less than an organized commercial, uh, excuse me, criminal activity. Police are set to arrest the 50 asylum seekers who caused the mayhem, yet again, uh, ordinary citizens of Europe are paying the price for an open door policy whilst the authorities are stretched having to deal with some of the very bad people that government, governments have allowed to stroll into Europe without scrutiny. Uh, it's very concerning there, and I think he, he does give us a link, link right here. It did come up on ANZA. Uh, latest news here, migrants rob ferry passengers. Uh, so, yes, all the ferry passengers, a mob of 50 of them there, robbing uh, the individual passengers on there. This was on February the 21st. Around 50 migrants robbed passengers on a ferry from Calgary 
uh, to Naples overnight, sources said Tuesday. Police were awaiting them when they arrived in the southern Italian port, the source said. Uh, we'll see if maybe we can find out something about that and how that goes. Uh, Sputnik News is reporting something very interesting here. Girl power. Woman may become Russia's next president. High-ranking government official has revealed that the next president of Russia may actually be a woman. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that there are no obstacles that might deter a female candidate from becoming the president of Russia. Well, that kind of makes me wonder if Maria Zakharova, the Russian's uh, spokesperson for foreign affairs, she may end up being one of those candidates. Now, she's not said so, and we haven't seen any indication that she might be, but the mere mention of the article here on Sputnik would make me wonder if she may be the candidate. I know she's very loyal to, to the Kremlin and uh, has been a very outspoken advocate uh, and against all of the uh, propaganda media that has been against Russia. So. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Mike Pence also taking to the trail saying no place in America for hatred. Pence condemns anti-Semitism and vandalizing uh, Jewish cemetery. Um, he stated here that um, on Wednesday afternoon, Pence and, uh, Pence and Missouri Governor Eric Grittens visited the uh, Chess Shem Shell Emeth Cemetery in University City where more than 150 headstones were toppled and broken on Sunday evening. The damage was uh, concentrated in an area holding the cemetery's oldest graves. Uh, sad to see that that actually happened there and I think more and more the Trump administration is trying to stand up against the anti-Semitism that is growing in America and sadly enough the more the anti-Semitism that is concerning us is that we're seeing more and more Christians as they're claiming that they are waking up to the truth about Israel. Well the truth about Israel is is that God promised to return the Jewish people to their homeland and if you think there's somebody else that should have been returned to the homeland then why aren't they there? Uh, that is a clear, uh, how would you call it, absurdity when it comes to the Word of God. If God has promised in so many scriptures in the Bible, whether it be Zechariah, uh, Joel, Obadiah, all these different prophecies that we see that God said He would return them back to their homeland. There we, we see Zechariah, that they, this is when they recognize who their Messiah is. They will see the one whom he was thrust through in his side, or pierced, as King James Bible brings out, that they would see him, and that they would weep and mourn as a family that lost their only son. Well, if someone else is supposed to be the real Jews and, and, and should have been there in the homeland, why didn't they get there? Is God not big enough to keep his own word and to fulfill his own promises that he has written through his prophets? I think he is. Not to say that there's not Jews there that are not real Jews, but this whole idea of the text Mars put out that the Jews in Israel today are Khazars is completely ludicrous. In fact, it has been debunked by real DNA experts that this is not the case. But it's not to say that there's not some Jews that are there today that are not real Jews. I could agree with that. When I see the likes of Shimon Perez siding with the Vatican and and basically selling out uh, the Jewish people to Rome so that Rome can get control of Jerusalem, then yes, it makes me do believe that there are some fake Jews there as well. No doubt about it. Not to say that he wasn't maybe a real Jewish man, but the fact that he sold his own people out is troubling in itself. So I do challenge this theory, and I do say to my Christian friends, think about it. You have to really wonder, there's such a major movement that this group or that group may be the real Jews. I've seen everything from the Native American Indians being the real Jews, they're the ones supposed to go to the homeland, to the, to the Native African people being the real Jews, and they're to go to the homeland. If you ever study anything about history or biblical history, especially, the, the black people have been natives to Africa for a long time. They were not Jews to begin with. Not to say there's not black Jewish people, there are. The Ethiopians, many of them are Jewish descent, but not all of them are. Even though the Israeli government, if you're Ethiopian, will give you Jewish citizenship anyway. Doesn't mean that they are, but they still permit it. I would say that God has a remnant there in the Promised Land today. But when it comes to God waking up Israel, that'll be an international event. No doubt we'll start in Jerusalem, but we'll sweep the globe and we'll wake up Israel all across the globe.